Hey guys, so if you're here for the giveaway, you've seen the title. Uh, the giveaway rules are going to be pretty different in this one. So uh, before you go rushing down to the comments section and leaving your comment and then going away and never coming back again, um, please make sure you follow all the directions down in the video description to basically keep a uh, this nice and short. Uh, long story short, basically there's a few bad apples out there that have been trying to game the system and try and trick me and try and get free stuff um, that are not legitimate winners and they've been trying to basically wasting my time and making these giveaways much harder than they should be so uh, you have to um, fill out the form that's in that's linked in the video description to enter the giveaway and i'm going to get your email address that way that way i can i know who actually is winner, who's actually being uh, the winner and I can contact you via email there's going to be a password to get to that form and the letters for that password will be flashed on the screen from time to time in this video that'll let you get in there to enter the giveaway for this flight stack so hopefully it's pretty simple full full uh, rules are down in the video description so make sure you read that um, i'm not going to be checking the comments for a winner on this video and probably never again on any future videos so this is probably going to be the way it's going to go from now on okay enough of that and let's get right into the video all right, so as we were checking out the new SpeedyB F7 V2 flight stack. So the flight stack does come with the uh, 401 ESC plus the flight controller. You can also buy these components separately if you want. And also I'll link all those down in the video description. Um, let's take a look at what you get in the box. Of course, you get the two components, the ESC and flight controller. You get your wiring looms and cables here. Um, One's for the 401 ESC to the flight controller, and then you have a couple here for the DJI setup. There's a DJI plug in this one. You get a XD60 for your battery connection. No XD30. So this is a, these are both 30 by 30 boards, so that would make sense. It's extra rubber grommets and washers and some M3 screw um, nuts. And you get some long M3 screws for mounting to your frame and a capacitor and for the uh, 490 ECS is a I think 35 volt uh, 470 microfarad this is a might be pre-production because I think in the uh, product description it says it should come with a 50 volt 470 microfarad capacitor so I might have the uh, old early version of this uh, take a quick look at the EC here pretty basic it is a Beale Heli 32 ESC as you see here uh, your current sensors here, pretty big MOSFETs. It's 45 amps. I think it bursts to 55 amps up to 10 seconds. Very nice large solder pads for your motor wires. You have 16 uh, 47 microfarad capacitors there for filtration. You have your little through holes there for the extra capacitors, as well as big pads for your XC60 battery connection. And you have some extra uh, capacitors here underneath. It looks like the the computer chips or the processing chips that you see are on a separate board. So you can see here, so these are all the MOSFETs for the powering the motors for the three phase uh, three phases of each motor. So they may be doing this to sort of separate the current draw from the uh, uh, on the main board here for the motors from the processing stuff here that talks to the flight controller. So I'm sort of seeing a lot of that lately. You can see a better look there, what that looks like. And it might, uh, might prove to be better. I don't know if this is any good. I haven't tested it yet. I'll talk about the build that I'm going to put this on here uh, later in the video. You do have a standard uh, connector there. I'll show you the connectors are included. But you also have some solder pads if you'd rather use those instead of the plugs. Uh, some people prefer solder pads. It's for, I guess, you know, crash a lot, you know, plugs tend to pop out sometimes. Uh, and you have them yeah, just on the on the underside. I think this is the top side. Not a whole lot here to see. You got rubber grommets here for I think these are M4 holes with the M, uh, M3 holes for the grommet itself. And uh, I, li I like that's already installed. These are sometimes a pain in the butt to install. So that's the EC. Um, pretty boring there actually. There's three should be DC. Here's the flight controller. This is the thing that's interesting and why I'm making this video. So. This thing is really loaded. It's an F7. Um, it's got an MPU 6000 MPU 6, gyro. 
It has a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi radio here, and you can see this is the uh, Bluetooth Wi-Fi combo antenna. Got a barometer. Uh, you have nine volts and a five volt regulator on here, and they're both two amps, I think. And these two guys right here. This is your F7 chip, Betaflight OSD, so I'll work with analog or digital. 16 megabytes of uh, black box data available to you. Uh, so this thing's this thing's really loaded. It's got six full UARTs. Uh, one, I think a UART 4 is for the ESC telemetry, which is going to come out on this plug right here. So again, you can use the plug, or you can use a solder pad, so you have your choice. Pretty nice. This over here is the plug for DJI. So you have your 6-pin connector here that will go to either your Vista or your DJI area in it. So that's for this plug here, but there's no solder pads for for this plug here. Now, in terms of all of the solder pads here, very nice layout, pretty big, um, big enough in my opinion. Should be fine for most people in terms of their soldering skills. I like how they've got these little thin white lines to sort of um, separate or section off each of the different UARTs. So you have UART one here, and then you have the 4V5 pad here, which is basically powered off of five volts powered off of the USB port uh, for like a receiver. So this is typically where you'd put your receiver on UART one. And you have also a 3.3 volt pad there. UART 5 over here looks like uh, uh, that could be good for like a GPS. You have UART 3 here, and this is also for camera control. So the CC is for camera control and video is for analog camera. So you have 5 volts ground to video, and this is basically for your analog camera here. Yeah, you got a little section for your LED. Got a little VBAT section here, buzzer section here. Just a uh, separated 5 volts there. UR2 over here, and you have a separate 9 volt pad over here, and a 5 volt pad with video out. So, this is probably for your video transmitter, um, and they have a separate 9 volt out for that. So, if you want to have clean video using uh, 9 volts, is probably recommended over VBAT, SDA, SCL for a compass. And I guess that if you want to use this here, UR6 here for your compass and your GPS combo, this whole section here could be wired up for that. So, that's pretty nice. This is a Pretty nicely loaded board, boot loader button here, USB type C port there. Of course, your rubber ground is already installed. Yeah, overall, pretty impressive what you get on this board. It's really packed. And we'll get to the um, functionality of this uh, Wi Fi and Bluetooth radio combo here that will allow you to connect to the board and configure it. Uh, using the SpeedyB app. You can also flash firmware, updated firmware, which I'll show you that here in a second. So Betaflight and EmuFlight are currently supported on this on uh, this particular board. iNav is coming. It's not available yet. You can also uh, analyze your black box data via the Wi-Fi connection on your smartphone. So pretty loaded. So let's take a look at all that. Okay, so first you're going to need to power the board. Obviously, if this is in like a quad, you plug it into your battery, the board will have power. But I'm going to go ahead and plug it in via USB-C here so it has power because uh, it's not in a quad yet. Okay, so bring up the uh, SpeedyB app and we'll hit the Bluetooth button and I'll start scanning. And it found the board here, SBF7V2. Go ahead and hit connect. And I already have a video on the SpeedyB app, so I'm not going to really cover it in detail. I'll, I'll link that video down in the description if you want more details on this app. There has been a few up, uh, app updates since then, so things like uh, the black box and the um, uh, flashing of the firmware, I think those have been added since this video, so since that video, so you'll see that in this video. Um, one other thing I didn't mention is you can also change the motor direction within the app, so if you go to the config page here. Actually, I think it's on the motors tab. Go over here and you see the gyro data updating here. And then down here at the bottom, you can change your motor direction via either BLLES or BLLE32. Let's just go over here. So obviously you're going to have to have um, you have your propellers on, uh, removed, and you're obviously going to have to have EC connected, and also have battery power and all that stuff, just like normal. And then you can go ahead and use this to change your motor direction. 
we're gonna get a little off topic here. Let's uh, go back to the beginning here and if you go under the ports tab, you can see here all the UARTs that are available, serial RX is on UART 1, and then you have ESC telemetry and UART 4, but the other ones don't have anything currently set up for it. So if you want to get into the former flashing, you have to disconnect from the board. And then it's going to be the menu here on the upper left. Tap on that and hit the flight controller firmware flasher tab. And you have your choice of uh, beta flight or EMI flight. Go ahead and click on that. And I think uh, what's on here is 425. So let's uh, go ahead and get the native, latest version here. Go to 428. And we'll do a full chip erase and download. And it's saying connect flight controller and app. So we'll select the type. Obviously, it's not the SpeedyB app adapter 2, it's the flight controller. Select that and start connecting. And go ahead and connect to the flight controller. And then at this point, it turns on the Wi Fi module because. Uh, Bluetooth is a lot slower, Wi-Fi is a lot faster. I'll go ahead and, uh, okay, it wants you to connect the phone via Wi-Fi to the board, so go ahead and hit connect. Connection successful, and it detects the flight controller, initializing flight controller, and it should go ahead and erase the flash, and just like it does on the uh, desktop app, it's a little different because you're using everything, it's all wireless here, so keep in mind, you know, you, you'll be doing this on a quad without uh, connecting this to your computer at all. All right, so it took a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and we'll connect back to the board. Okay, so just like you would see in a normal Betaflight configurator on the desktop, you have to apply the custom defaults. So we'll go ahead and do that, and it's going to do that and re reboot the board. All right, so board is now connected. You can see the gyro is responding. And you can see here at the top, it has the target as well as the current firmware version. We're in, now on beta 428, which is the latest version at the time of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect from the board again. And let's go ahead and show you the black box analyzer. Oh, and by the way, you can also um, do BLHeli configurator on here. So if you want to update the firmware of the ESC, I think it only works on BLHeli um, SESC is not 32 because I think 32 bits are you have some sort of like encryption or something for the firmware because it's like needs to be, needs to be licensed. So if you want to update your firmware via the SpeedyB app, that's a BLH SESC firmware. You can do that here as well in the in the SpeedyB app. But we're gonna we're gonna look at the black box analyzer now and go ahead and load from flight controller. Go through the same process. Connect. I do like how everything is kind of very streamlined here. Turning on the Wi-Fi module. Okay, so yeah, this, this uh, flight controller is completely blank, so there's no uh, black box data on here, but if there were, you can actually um, look at the gyro data of the flight that you had previously done right here. It just has direct access to the black box data, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video in terms of covering all the features. Uh, again, you know, for the giveaway, make sure you follow all the directions that I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I'll also repeat that in the video description. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.